Well, all right, all right, all right. I'm here in Miami with the one, the only, Dennis McKinley. Hey! <laughs> Look, I, I don't even deserve that intro there because you are the one that's making all the noise. So I feel like we should be giving you a good applause. Thank you. Know, you. Afro Unicorn is boom! Thank you, thank you. But Dennis, I mean, I watch your stories and you <laughs> are the ultimate hustler. I, I know we're here with, with Ross and them, but <laughs> you are the ultimate hustler. Like, from the cognac, we're going to talk about crew, yeah. to all-star kids, like, hair, like, <laughs> hot dogs. <laughs> I love the hair business, by the way. I love the hair business, So, I know I have these um, five questions that we're going to go over. Yeah. But if you feel like touching on the other businesses, sure. I mean, are you, wait, are you Jamaican? I you know what? I, maybe at some point, you know. Uh, well, I tell you this, we, brother, we, got we some, all, he got, he got all, jobs. Yeah, we all flow through there, right? But, he, uh, he got jobs. Yeah, I think we wanted the same because it's like, you know, whatever you got going on, you got to execute it. All right, that's uh, important. Yep, so let's get to it. Tell us about whatever business you want to talk about. <laughs> Well, look, we're in Miami. We're at Kid Screen. Uh, so I guess we should at least talk about All-Star Kid. And I'll tell you what, you know, this journey has been uh, amazing. Learned a lot. You know, we, you know, All-Star Kid just came from one idea. You know, my daughter who loves Afro Unicorn, and she's got all every Afro Unicorn thing that she came out with, uh, including her luggage that she takes everywhere with her. But, you know, um, so we've seen your growth and we've been inspired. But All-Star Kid just... It was an idea because uh, Pilar, we couldn't get her to listen to any music in the womb. And, you know, her mother can sing, sing. So we say, you know, let's go to the studio. Let's make some music for Pilar. That's what we did. And that's how it was born. After we released music, people started looking for content. They right. asking for merch and things like that. So we just say, you know what? This is bigger than what we thought. And um, we took it serious and we created a brand. So allstarkid.com is preschool. Uh, it's two to six. It's music based, and uh, you know we're growing fast. But uh, you know, PJ is four now, and it's like um, now she likes to sing, so it's making her on the Yeah, gotta get her on the record. Yeah. But yeah, so you guys have the um, videos. You're yes. out here looking at content. Yes. Um, books are going to be coming out soon. Yep. Merch you yep. have so. Just the whole franchise of All Star Kids, so that's one of his businesses. Maybe we just go through the line. Yeah. Let's just do that. <laughs> well, let's go to Nyack Cognac next because our headquarters we import uh, into Miami, and that business is uh, on fire. Again. This man got his own cognac. Like what? I don't drink you know, dark, but I got to try. Did, did you bring any? Of course. Okay. Okay. I got, I'll, I, I'll, I got a bottle for you. Um, vodka. Okay, I'm not mad at that, but we, you know, uh, when we started that journey three years ago, you know, cognac was all the rage, and just, you know, for the culture, you know what Hennessy means to the culture, they mm -hmm. dominated, you know, uh, black culture, um, mm. in the spirits world for so long, and we, I wanted something different, you know, I own a, a bunch of clubs, and that's all we were selling was Hennessy, I said, you know what, it's got to be a better way. So, um, we got with a fantastic team, and we created Nyack, and uh, we're growing fast, thousand percent in the last two years, and uh, we just keep growing. We're in 18 states right now, and this is really the best cognac on the planet. It's smooth, and we're going to tour a different demo, okay. because I don't want to drink what my daddy was drinking. My daddy was drinking Martell and Hennessy, so this is for a different culture, different age group, different demo. You know, so I'm gonna be able to get it down. That's been my problem. Oh, yeah, like no. with Hennessy, I was like, you get up here, I'm like, I this is going okay. down smooth. Like, down. We're in Miami. Shout out to my, my partner Trina Rockstar. I mean, uh, everybody loves Trina, right? Yep. Uh, she's our partner. We just came out with two new flavors, which are actually her flavors: cinnamon and peach. Um, so look, if you're in one of our 18 states, go to the liquor store. If you're not, you can always buy it online. Um, not yet. Nyack. I have interesting stories. So I actually went to school down here, Florida, Florida Memorial College. And um, You Don't Know Nan was our theme song. Hey, okay. listen. <laughs> she just had her first festival. She performed that song. It's still a lot of people recognize. 
All right, so you mentioned club. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. Also on Crew Lounge, uh, Crew is the largest uh, brand culture-wise uh, for entertainment in Black Black America, right? Uh, we have 14 locations open right now, another 10 locations coming. Um, we're primarily a hookah lounge, right? So we don't do like stand on tables and couches and stuff like that. But, um, you know, look. Uh, if I'm there, I'm, still, I'm, I'm on the table. Well, you can. We'll do okay. your best. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, one thing about when you talk about franchises like McDonald's, you always know when you go there. You're going to get the same thing, get. what to expect. And exactly. For a long time, that hasn't been available to our culture. You go to New York and you gotta find somewhere to party. You go to mm -hmm. LA, you gotta find somewhere. But with crew, you know, if you go to any other major cities, Houston, Atlanta, et cetera, et cetera, you can find a crew and you have the same experience. And that's what's important. For you. I love it. I love it. Talk about these hot dogs. I have oh, yeah. not been able to. <sighs> okay, you gotta come to Atlanta. Yeah. We have 12 locations, uh, half of them in Atlanta, but. You know, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and we love hot dogs. That's what mm -hmm. we do. We eat conies all day long. I was in Atlanta. I'm like, you know what? I need a, I need a coney dog. I, mean, I couldn't find one. And I ran into this spot called the Original Hot Dog Factory. And I said, you know what? It was only one this morning. I said, you know what? Let me just buy this one because I know there are a lot of people like me who are looking for a great hot dog. And I've traveled all across this country. So we added the Chicago dog. We added... We had a, I'm about to say, you had the LA Street Dog? Okay. The LA Street Dog. We had to, right? <laughs> so, um, did the best hot dogs are, are across the country. We put them under one roof, and the original hot dog factory was born. You know, we got 26 different hot dogs, 26 different regions around the world. And it's just wow. an amazing experience. Every time I see them, I'm like, <sighs> Yeah, no, listen, you gotta experience that. And, uh, you gotta get the LA Street Dog, but you gotta try the Detroit County too. Okay. Right. Okay, so we did one, two, three. Hair. Yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you about my hair journey, right? Because people are like, Dennis, you in the hair business? Yes, I'm in the hair business. You know, uh, I don't know what year this is. About 10 years ago, I started a brand called Queen Virgin Remy. And the short story is I was dating a young, a young lady, and she was like, I was in LA at the time. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I want to go, buy, like, I need to buy some hair. I'm like, okay, let's go. It was like 700 bucks. And it was a line out the door. I said, hold on. This cannot be real life. What's going on here? Did my research, jumped into the air business. And five years after that, we sold, we had 16 locations. We sold to Rebecca, which was the largest hair company in the world, out of China. And they were smart. After they sold it to me, they said, listen, you can't be in the air business for another five years. That's what they the always do. And it gave me enough money. I signed it. I said, okay. And now I'm back in the hair business. I, mm -hmm. joined, I joined the ownership group of Hype Hair Magazine, hey. which is a legacy brand. Very um, classic. Shout out to our CEO, uh, Leah Diaz. She's in LA. Okay. We have to connect. Yeah, she's amazing. You should have to connect with her. And we're, we, you know, we're, we're, we're taking Hype Hair to another level. You know, we're adding, um, you know, hair to the business. Uh, she, she just signed a mega licensing deal with Burlington Co. Factory. Wow. And Walmart. So they're going to be in 600 rows uh, this year. So, yeah, you're going to see hype here and on everything, right? Because as far as, like, black news, black culture, when it comes to hair, hype hair has always been the source. Right. You know, so you're going to see them on, on, t on um, hair brushes and caps and everything else here related, you know, for the culture. So very excited about hype hair. That's a legacy brand, so it's, it's always exciting. I promise you this will be the longest answer for question number one, because don't nobody <laughs> have as many businesses as this man. <laughs> so we finally got through question number one. Question number two is kind of, we already talked about it a little bit, but like when did you start? So you've already, ten, you said 10 years ago on the hair. Yep. Okay, so hot dogs. Hot dog is, uh, that's a seven-year journey. Seven-year you know, journey. Um, I bought that in 2015. Cognac was two. Uh, that's a three. That's three years old. We okay. started in 2020. Okay. Um, crew. Uh, that's turning 13 this year. Wow. I bought that back in 2013. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All Star Kids is brand new. Uh, 
I would just like to call it four years old because that's when we started with PJ in the belly. So let's call it four years old. Right. PJ in the belly. Yep. And we just started with that. I mean, that's been a real journey. I mean, wow. So, like, I can just imagine, like, you used to, like, you probably saw everything when you was in school, huh? Yeah, you know, I was, you, you like, was a, you selling, was probably selling um, autographs, um, baseball yeah. cards, whatever yeah. you could. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, what's amazing though, um, I had an opportunity to 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 uh, start in the McDonald's system when I was very very young. My next door neighbor owned um, uh, two McDonald's in Detroit, and uh, her and her husband, uh, Tina Brundish. So shout out to Tina Brundish and the Brundish family. Like she really introduced me to like business at a very very young age, like real business, no hustle. Like so, you was like the real Calvin. Yeah, no, back sir, in the day. No, for real. Because All right. She, 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 uh, you know, she was black owned, and uh, you're talking about 30 years ago. You know, we 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 promote and pump up black owned stuff now, but 30 years ago, she was in a McDonald's system. And that was really not easy to get into, and uh, she's really set a precedent. Like, if you're gonna do business, you gotta do it the correct way. Yeah. So I gotta talk to you offline. It's another family in Detroit uh -huh. that had about five or yeah. so McDonald's. Yeah, I probably, I probably, I probably know. know them. Yeah. All right, so what advice would you give other entrepreneurs that look to get into one of your fields? <laughs> well, let's talk about the kids business because, you know, if anybody is on the outside looking into what you're doing, um, they would probably think that it's easy because you make it look easy, but it is not. You know, if you get into a business, you have to really, really do your research. You have to have a real team. You have to be really, really passionate about what you do because... If you think you're going to start a brand and do what April has done in her amount of time, that's just it's not realistic, right? So you got to really be passionate about it. You got to have a roadmap and you have to put the work in because your time will come, but it may not be today. And, and, and that's the difference between a lot of businesses. A lot of people go into business and fail and it's not because they're not making money. It's just because they quit. They don't because want to do the work. They don't want to do They're work. not consistent. I always yeah. say, like, I think what separates me from other people is that I'm consistent. Whether you, whether the audience shows up or not, yep. I'm going to always show up. It's still there. Still doing the work. And that's very important. A lot of people quit because they may look at what you're doing and somebody else say, oh, man, you know, she's doing more than me. But it's like, are you doing the work? Are you consistent? Is your message on point? Do you, are you really doing this for the passion and not the money? You know, so that's the best advice I got. Hopefully somebody hears that. I hope so. So you kind of said it, but what's your life purpose? You know what? Um, it's changed recently. You mm -hmm. know, since I had uh, PJ, you know, it, it, I look at life a lot different. You know, I, I you know, I'm four, four, oh, 40, but I, you know, so I was considered a, a old, considered an old dad. You know, I go pick up PJ from school. Like I'm all these young kids. I'm like, I'm like the oldest guy I'm getting. <laughs> Well, it'd be like weird, but I think, you know, developing her, you know, and it ain't about her going into business, but just her doing whatever her life's purpose is. That's like, that's, that has focused me to like, just mold her into, you know, that's, that's really my driving force moving forward. And I love to give back. I like, we do a lot of charity and that's Boys and Girls Club, et cetera. So I just like pouring into kids because. You know, somebody poured into me when I was young, you know, and that's very important. Always a full circle moment. So, yeah, yeah your life purpose now is PJ yeah. and making sure she has all the tools just like yeah. they did for you for sure. back then. Yeah. I love it. All right, last question. Where are you from? Uh, what up, though? What up, though? No? Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, I'll tell you what. I, I love being in, from Detroit. You, you know, um, Detroit is a lot different now than when I grew up in the 80s. You know, um, Detroit was a heavy manufacturing city. Now it's kind of leaning more toward tech. Detroit is still the automobile capital of the world, but, you know, when you grow up in Detroit, it's just a, a, a work ethic that you have that uh, just cannot be taught. You know, it's just in you. Know? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, born and raised in Detroit, but my, my father's side, we're from Tupelo, Mississippi. Okay. On my mama's side, we're from Memphis, Tennessee. So, you know, uh, come from a very, very poor, you know, family history, right? So, you know, going from Detroit.
Trey is like, you know, I knew that it was more to life than just like city and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, shout out to Detroit. Every, you know, we go to Detroit, everybody know, like, you know, you gotta be from Detroit, you know. We got Kurt Yeas, we wear big coats, you know, <laughs> right, you know, so. And they're like, nice things. Real nice things, nice cars, nice everything. You know, that's that, that's that, uh, that's that BMF mentality. Yep. <laughs> you know, I'm all into it now. So, what's the difference between Detroit and Miami? Well, I think culturally, I mean, every city is just a lot different. Now. Everybody has, has their own culture, which is very, very, you know, exciting. You know, um, and I've lived everywhere. I lived in Chicago. I lived in New York. I lived in LA for a minute. Uh, I even lived in Miami for a minute, oh. Atlanta now. Mm-hmm. But everybody got their own culture, and, you know, and, and culture is not uh, something that happens overnight. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a hundred years of like doing certain things a certain way and passing it on to your kids. So, uh, you know, um, Detroit is just y'all really get it off the mud. Yeah, you know, we, we, we got to. Y'all really do get it off yeah. the mud. You know, I tell you, if you go to a city like LA, you know, which is heavy like movie, et cetera, et cetera. But it's got everything else in it. Detroit is just like, look, if you ain't working at the plant or automobile, right? Or you know, it's like, what you gonna do in your life? You know, mm-hmm. and that has made a lot of people like say, look, I gotta get more out of it because it just it's not a Chicago or New York where you have opportunities to do a lot of different things. I what I see is when people come out of Detroit and they go to other areas, y'all really bloom. <laughs> yeah. Y'all really prosper. And we're a little aggressive. <laughs> I love it though. I absolutely love it. I love it. Well, thank you, Dennis. No, thank you, man. Congratulations <laughs> to all you're doing after Unicorn. You're a big inspiration. You are the star of this show. So many people, you know, ain't too many uh, black folk out here. No. I'll just tell you. So we meet people, they're like, um, do you know Africa Unicorn? Yeah, that's my homegirl, you know? So it's very important. You're doing amazing work. Thank and you. it's a lot of pressure when you are out front. And you are the first in many cases. A lot of pressure, but you guys are doing great. And uh, we're rooting you. for you. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this uh, animation. Yep, it's coming soon. Oh, okay. and the, the Golden Book, right? The, our little Golden Book, LGB. Yeah. We're ready for that. We, we collect Classic. Those. Yeah, we collect those. So. <laughs> give, me an autograph, give me an autograph copy. All right. Then it's going to be selling them, just so y'all know. <laughs> I'm a right, tell me I gotta give them 10. Put 30% on you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But if anyone can get them sold, I know he can get them sold yeah, before me. No, so. that's, a, that's amazing, bro. That's amazing. Thank you, Dennis. All right. All right, y'all. Till next time. Bye.